The NFC South is loaded with a lot more than just the Super Bowl champions. You have a, a plethora of options for fantasy. I am personally in on the Carolina Panthers fantasy outlook. Andy is not, but this entire division um, is is one that you won't want to miss. And stick around for the end of today's episode where we actually talk about something very important as part of the Atlanta Falcons coaching staff. You will not want to miss that. Make sure you like and subscribe and stay tuned. Hey, Foot Clan, before we start today's show, I want to thank SeatGeek for sponsoring today's episode. Uh, look, you've all, you've all been there. We've been there recently buying lots and lots and lots of sports tickets. Got to get them seats. Oh, so many seats. And a lot of these ticketing websites make things difficult on purpose i it seems that way look we've all used SeatGeek for years we all have it on our phone we all use it on the computer it is the fastest easiest way to find tickets in fact i was at some other ticketing site trying to just like see the seat map and it was an awful experience because i am so used to SeatGeek, and that is what we always use and they have 50,000 five-star reviews that back up what i'm saying and they pull in millions of tickets from all over the web you can get the tickets to the game that you want and uh, we love SeatGeek. We've used them forever, and we have the hookup. You can use the code FOOTBALLERS, and you'll get $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code FOOTBALLERS if you visit SeatGeek.com or download the SeatGeek app today. Use the code FOOTBALLERS for $20 off your first SeatGeek order at SeatGeek.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. I'm not happy, boys. You're looking smug back there behind the cameras, but I'm not happy. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. You got to explain it because y- your displeasure I- is with uh, the two miscreants in the behind the, the cameras. Yes, yes, yeah. not yes. these, not in- you two. I'm incredibly sorry. Incredibly attractive co-hosts of the Fantasy Footballers. Correct, and it's both Mike of and you Jason. Guys. Mike Those and are Jason. the incredibly attractive <laughs> in that co-hosts. order. Um, but we just started the show, got off to a great start. You got the intro music. I welcomed everybody in. Then I glanced down at the desk. Mm. Oh, and I see what's happening here. We got We did not approve this removal. Sure, we're we're shells of ourselves. We have no emotional uh, oh abilities. I'm, I'm dead inside. But where is the sun's towel, Brooks? So we got to we got to put this. Yeah, I, someone's bringing it out during the show. And we gotta we gotta bring this up for the listeners. So here was how the conversation went. Brooks said, son's towel, back up, or nah. And Andy's response was, leave it. Mm. I was me- I was referring to oh. leave it in the... Okay. Oh, is this actually on Andy? No. it was. I, I meant leave it in the state it was, which was on the table. Yeah, but he said, should it go back up? Yeah, we, we had to record something else this morning, mm. so he took it down. Leave it, leave it the down. Point, the point is, is oh. we don't... We don't I run from a, We don't run from it. It might be my fault. Wait, either way, Al Borland's coming out here and putting it up during the show. 100%. Don't shake your head at me. You throw that thing with some some sticky tape on it, and I'm putting it up. Otherwise, we're we're backing away from our sons just cuz we're up against the wall. And that's not happening. That's right. We'll get it up. Sure, we we are dead inside. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm a hollow man. <laughs> and and you know, if this ends up bucks and six, th- we had a good run, Foot Clan. Yeah, it and was the great. show was it great. Was, it was fun. We will miss you. You will miss us. It um, will magically appear at please, the front of this table. Please c- come to the service. Yeah, this is the, <laughs> this is the final show. We're going to have a wake. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, they, they oh, can throw no. whatever they want. We'll yeah. be dead. Uh, Tuesday, July 20th. I That's all the suns I want to talk about today. We have divisional breakdowns. We're into the NFC. Uh, these have been very popular shows. We just did the whole AFC, breaking down each and every team, things that changed in the off season, getting you ready for the 2021 fantasy season. I think we've learned a lot individually on these shows um, with each of us bringing up some points about the players involved. We also have uh, some news to talk about. 
I mean, August is fast approaching. We will be five shows a week before you know it. In two weeks. Yeah, I know. It's two crazy. Two weeks. I'm finally, I'm going to go out of town in uh, about a week for a few days to Gotta recharge. To recharge like you did recently and uh, get ready for five shows a week plus the footcast. Oh, brother. Plus some other stuff that we'll have in store. But this is the fun time of year. I mean, anticipation. If you're brand new to the show, welcome in. Yeah, hey. Excited to have you. For the last 1,075 shows, we've existed to make your team better, to get you ready for the season. And have a good time. And congratulations on your championship. I mean, this is the time of year. Like everyone knows, in, in one more month, uh, when uh, mid-August is, is here, uh, everyone is going to be listening. Uh, those people will not get the information that you are getting right now. So I good, mean, they could scroll back here. and listen. Sure, but you know those, th uh, those they people. won't. They don't scroll. They came late to the party. You're here on time. Here's the quick question for today's show. Uh, it's from Brian in Dayton, Ohio. He says, I'm trying to figure out what the best settings are for fab. Do you guys prefer continuous? And if so, what nights do you run it? Do you run it once after all the games? Um, back it up just a second. Make sure you explain fab waivers and then what we do. Yeah, the free agent acquisition budget fab is a fake amount of money. You get 100 bucks. There's no real money there. It's just virtual currency and everyone bids on your your waiver wire options. There's no priority list of, oh, I lost a game, so I'm ahead of this other person. That might be used as a tiebreaker. Um, the, the record will be, but it's really a matter of if you believe in this player on the waivers, spend more than others. But the fun part is you don't know how much others are spending. It's blind. Um, you're, you're going in and making your bidding. So the settings we use, Mike, why don't you explain what days – of the week and how that runs. Yeah, so on continuous, uh, you're gonna it's gonna run every morning, uh, and we have it we have it run every single day except for Tuesday. We give everybody the breath of the weekend just happened, which is pretty normal. Yeah, like re reevaluate, get your uh, your strategy together. Who are you gonna go after? Which players are you gonna target? Who are you going hard in the paint after? So we don't run it on Tuesday, but every other day after that we. Uh, it runs once in the morning, and it adds an, it adds a huge element of strategy, fun as well. Every morning you get to go check and see who did what, who was stupid, who was which players slipped through the crap uh, <laughs> through, through the, the crap. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want them on your team. They no. slip right through the crap, and they are messy. Because <laughs> it happens all the time. Where you, where you look and you're like, wait, so and so got this running back for. For two? Nobody like, bid on them? Well, that's the backbone of our uh, drop it like it's hot during the year where we're basically recommending you also see, like it's easy to see who's been signed, but you forget somebody has to be dropped Correct. in order to sign those players. And if you, you can sneak some really good players onto your roster just by the fact that, you know, people are making necessary moves to stream quarterbacks, tight ends, um, pick up, you know, insurance, running backs, things like that. All right. A reminder, you can find us on YouTube. That that sun's that sun's towel is going to appear very shortly. Uh, you can find us on youtube.com slash the fantasy. Have we located it? We've located it. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the wheels are in motion. Wheels are in motion. The fantasy is the team. website. What yeah, a team we have here uh, for to support the NBA on yeah. this fantasy footballer show. UltimateDraftKit.com if you want to get access to the Ultimate Draft Kit or the UDK Plus. The Draft Analyzer is live right now as well, and so if you run that, you want to tag us on Twitter. Let us know what grade you got. Yell at us. Uh, we won't fix any of your grades, but you could fix your roster, and then we'll grade you better. Yeah, that's on you. That's on you. All right, it's time for some news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Okay, I'm happy now. Yeah, there we go. The Suns towel is back. Down but not out. <laughs> I don't yeah. feel very good. No. <laughs> no, no, neither do I. Look, I want to say something uh, because we are bitter. We are biased. Yeah. We are fans. That that should be the motto of fans. Right. We, we are, are bitter. bitter we, we are biased. biased. We are fans. We are fans. But I will say this. Um, I I do respect the Bucks fans. 
Uh, I think that they are better people than other fans. I, I understand that they're going through the exact same joy that we were going through on this run. I know this is impossible for Jason to bear. But I just want to say, like, I mean, it's been good hearted for the most part. Mm -hmm. And um, look, I, I if we dish it, we got to take it. That's all I'm saying. If I can just add on to that for one second. I completely agree. That's it. I, oh. That's it. it. The Bucks fans have been a lot of fun. Let's and leave it there. Big right? man Jason yeah, showing up. That's right. I mean, I hate you with all of me, but you're good peoples. And the captions on Jason's picture where he was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if man, you're on Twitter, Spider Man all the shorts together. I, I posted a picture of Jason. He was on the back wall. <laughs> and here's what happened in that game the Suns were losing and they. <laughs> Jason went to the back wall for a moment, and we made a couple shots, and he, he associated him not watching the game on the back wall with our comeback, and he committed himself to the back wall. That's where I lived. Did you just say? I didn't see this. So someone, I know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. So you put Photoshop Spider-Man Spider -Man <laughs> holding the trains together. <laughs> it was the funniest thing of all time. Yeah, Jason was in a squat position. The shorts were doing their best work. The best work they could do to hold them together. <laughs> and the, the amount of captions related to GasX or those oh, shorts were good. innumerable. <laughs> I'm sorry. You just got to go see that picture. Yeah, okay. <sighs> All right, news. <laughs> oh, Mike, saw Mike just saw the picture. <laughs> Saquon Barkley said Monday he does not know if he'll be ready for practice next week when, they, when the Giants start training camp. I know if he'll be ready next week when they start training camp. How does he not know? He is not going to be ready. Ooh. Um, but that is, again, not really breaking news. That's kind of the timeline expected that we've talked about. His uh, uh, surgery didn't happen until, I want to say, like October. So the timeline, he still should be ready for the beginning of the season. Might get off to a slow start, um, but won't probably be ready for the first week of training camp. For full activity. I think that uh, I saw someone on Twitter putting it in an excellent way of saying players are always positive about, oh, I'm coming back. You know, don't even, don't, don't sweat it. Don't worry. I'm going to be there. So the, so uh, weighing that information of the past with how Saquon is talking about his injury, I mean, that's, that's where it feels concerning. I'm, this this new information or him talking at the the press conference or whatever it was that doesn't change my opinion of of how I've felt about Saquon. But it's it it doesn't feel good to see to have your player be kind of wishy washy on on his answer. Where you draft Saquon, you can draft other elite running backs, right? That do not need an acclimation period. That do not play on. On the Giants? The Giants with that offensive line. And look, it, even if he's Saquon, like you think he's going to get the Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook workload in week one or two? Probably not. Yeah. This so, is why but, on our early bust show, he was he was a name that was brought up. Yeah. So um, it's down a notch for me, tier-wise. Washington football team running back J.D. McKissick gained weight this offseason. Mike, you talk about gaining weight all the time. Bulking hey, up. wait. <laughs> what? Well, at the running back position. Yeah, thank you. At, yeah, I'm not saying you talk about gaining weight. But that's exactly what you said. Well, you talk about, yes. in the context of my previous sentence, you talk about how you feel about running backs and wide receivers adding yes. or cutting weight. Would you like to expound on that? Yes. And why McKissick will steal your soul? Uh, running backs, when they put on weight, I do not like it. Uh, I get what the the... the the context and the concept is they want to be able to take the wear and the tear of all of those carries, but more frequently, more frequently than not, they lose agility, they lose speed, the things that were making them actually successful as a player. So I do not like when I see running backs talk about putting on weight. But when and the the opposite of that is wide receivers, they it it's it seems to have worked out for them. And I, I know this is a lot of just know you know uh, uh not really having uh, there's no data behind this this is just my personal run through fantasy football that 
when I see a uh, running back talk about putting on weight, it doesn't work out. Meanwhile, it does for wide receivers. Okay, so McKissick uh, doesn't want to be thought of as only a pass-catching back. That's a shame. That was what you were good at. Uh, Peyton Barber <laughs> cut weight because he doesn't want to be thought of as a no longer on the roster running back. So he's trying to make the team. And that was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper. Switch your league right now to the fastest growing fantasy platform today. Let's like, get... what, is, what is he going to do? Like, McKissick is not taking Antonio Gibson's job when it comes to carries. He may, he might, the, the best case scenario for McKissick is he holds on to exactly the same job that he had last year. That's best case. Know your role. Well, right? Stay no. in your lane. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying, like, you were. You were very important to the team. Well, that, that I'm, that's what I'm, I'm saying. I'm saying, like, know what your role was and be great at that role. Yeah. But I, I imagine he, you know, I don't know. I, I, didn't, see, I didn't see him say this. Um, I don't know how much weight he gained, but. 72 pounds. It's, <laughs> it's really bad news. Oh, he's man. slowed down significantly, but he's hoping to be the goal line option. Lindale so. McKissick. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Uh, oh, thank oh, there there. you. Thank you, Al. I had been prepared for that that whole talk, and then I let my guard down. And, and then and the, got the drop came. Okay. Let's, uh, let's get this started. Let's get divisional. We're into the NFC South today on our divisional breakdowns. The NFC shows have begun. And we'll start with the Saints. Last year, 12-4. and four. Actually started the year 1-2. and two. Questions abounded. That's crazy, man. And then they won nine straight games. Uh, they also went 6-0 and oh in the NFC South, which didn't really matter because they swept Tampa in the regular season but then lost in the divisional round to Tampa. Uh, and they whooped them in the regular season. I mean, by a combined 46 points. So I think the big question mark uh, for the Saints, and I kind of have a narrative here that I want your opinion on, but people want to know is if the Saints are going to regress without Breeze, right? post Breeze era begins, there was news this morning that the Saints are going to open a uh, – hold an open competition at quarterback – don't know who the 2021 starter is. I know we all like Sean Payton. But last year was a perfect example of magic at the head coaching position does not always mean success on the field. The Patriots lost Tom Brady, and it was a rough year for the Patriots, figuring out the quarterback position and the offense. Are you expecting regression from this team? And uh, what does it mean to you that they're having an open competition right now? Yeah, I, I, th I think the open competition was what was expected. Otherwise, we would all have one of these guys statted with confidence that they are the starter. Nobody knows who the starter is. The beat reporters will uh, take their guess, and they admit they don't know who it is. We're not going to know who it is until late in the season. Um, and there will be regression for the Saints as far as when, when, when you're going from a you know, first ballot Hall of Fame quarterback and you've been a very, very solid team, you're not going to just stay status quo and be one of the best in the league. There, But the roster is strong. Most positions, the defensive side of the ball, as an NFL franchise, I expect the Saints to still be a quality team, which is why I, I do lean that Taysom Hill will still get the starting gig. He was 3-1 and one as a starter. He's going to manage the offense better, turn the ball over fewer times, and I think at the end, this is a team that just wants to win games. And I, you know. There's parallels here with New England because the Saints last year, they were fourth in defensive rushing yards given up, fifth in passing yards, fifth in points against. New England's recipe was some, right. some passing, some running from the quarterback position with Cam Newton and then play elite defense. It's, it's hard of looking at Taysom Hill's starts because – we view everything through the fantasy football lens, and Taysom Hill was very solid for uh, for that purpose. He was a top-12 quarterback in each of his starts, including an incredible debut as the quarterback four against the Falcons. But those four games, Atlanta, Denver, Atlanta, Philadelphia, and I know that it's, it's wins on the board, but how much does the team look at that and go, well, Taysom Hill – beat really crappy teams 
and then we lost to Philadelphia, who at the time, it, like th- at the time of the season, Philadelphia was already, it was bad. Like they were already t- looking towards a. Uh, that seemed next like year. a that seemed like a let your guard down situation. Possible, and that was also, I believe, the first game for Jalen Hurt. So it was kind of a a shot in the arm for the Philadelphia Eagles. But um, it will change uh, who the quarterback is. Changes the outlook of some of these players. For me, the biggest uh, difference. Here is Alvin Kamara. Whether or not Alvin Kamara... Really? It's not Michael Thomas? No, because Michael Thomas showed in that four-game stretch that he was absolutely outstanding with Taysom Hill. His target market share was through the roof. He was on pace for like 180 targets. I mean, this was... I, I don't have that much of a difference in my outlook between Winston and uh, Taysom Hill when it okay. comes to Michael Thomas. I, I, I think Michael Thomas will have... More opportunity for receiving touchdowns because I would presume that uh, Winston would throw more uh, passing touchdowns. But outside of that, I uh, it's really Alvin Kamara to me because of the target volume and whether or not the quarterback can take off running or, or dump it down to the incredible Kamara. How much do you feel right now? Uh, so are, you're, are, you, are you still projected for Taysom Hill? Yes. So, and Alvin Kamara is – Right now, uh, where in your running back rank? He, he's he's already my running back three with Taysom. Oh, there's Super Camario. I mean, hey, look, Alvin Kamara. So is, you're not that worried. You're you're talking up how you're worried, but he's your running back three. Yeah, there's a tier. There's a tier break. Um, you know, I, obviously Dalvin Cook, Christian McCaffrey are in their own tier, and then and then Alvin Kamara is next. But he was the running back one last year, right? I. I have him down as a new the new nickname, new descriptor. It's the dumbest player to doubt in the NFL. Kamara? Alvin Kamara. Okay. It's the dumbest player to doubt. We create these new reasons to doubt him, and there's no reason to doubt him. He is he's averaging the most yards per touch of any running back through the first four years of their career. That's since nineteen seventy. He reminds me of what Jamal Charles was, if you remember, just the Yep. Look, you're on another level than everybody else. And I do not personally have any concern for Alvin Kamara, regardless of quarterback. I am with Jason. I 100% believe that Taysom Hill is going to win the job. Um, look, you, you can say what you want about, like, hey, it was – they lost to Philadelphia. I mean, it was overall pretty a pretty good debut, and Winston lost to him once. So – Maybe that's Sean Payton wanting to give Taysom his due because he promised him. I mean, I don't know. We'll have an open competition again. I know Taysom Hill says he's only been doing workouts for a starting quarterback, starting quarterback <laughs> workouts. So he won't be ready for anything else if he, if he loses. Oh, that sucks for him. I know. And if you've watched Jameis Winston's workouts, he's only been doing workouts for the lead in the Barnum & Bailey Circus. <laughs> So he's really looking to do some wild and wacky things out there. Dude, nobody does stupider workouts than Jameis Winston. These videos he posts, it's like, what are you doing? They are interesting. Do you? Let me just, since Jason's brought it up a lot this offseason, Mike, I just want your take. Do you a- have any actionable uh, difference, in your opinion, on Alvin Kamara based on the quarterback? I Like an, an adjustment on how you would treat him for the fantasy football draft season I don't we saw such a small sample of of Taysom Hill and in those first two games uh, he threw the ball 18 or 23 times and then 16 times before uh really opening it up you know and then averaging about 37 attempts per game over those last two and that's when he finally did target Alvin Kamara so I don't as of right now I'm not concerned either way I know that there are definitely uh studies and things of how a mobile quarterback you you do see a a drop in in targets you know maybe one to two targets a week but Kamara is still elite and is the the number two receiving option on the team now I won't stay here too long Jason's talked a lot about the value he likes in Michael Thomas right now he's a mid third round pick the wide receiver ninth off the board um I'm more on the like moderate value side for for Michael Thomas. I expect him to be capable of returning to what he was before the breakout like insane season, right? So that was wide receiver seven or six. Wide receiver ninth off the board right now. I mean, if you believe in Michael Thomas, no matter what, maybe there's a little bit of a second round value there in the third. Yeah, I I, I mean I've I've talked about it in recent shows. 
but I do think he bounces back. I, I think he is as locked and loaded as a wide receiver five through 10 as possible. Like I, I don't think he has the ability with this new quarterback to be the wide receiver one, but I don't see him dropping outside of the top 10 either. His, his target market share is as assured as any player in the league because yeah. the wide receiver core behind Michael Thomas is not only not good, but also irrelevant because Michael Thomas. I guess part of me hesitates on that pick with Thomas versus some of the, um, you know, like Terry McLaurin is the ceiling higher. Uh, is it is it higher for Allen Robinson or Amari Cooper than it is for? Because you said you don't expect him to be able to compete for number one. Are there players? behind him in your rankings that do have that chance yeah I, I do have players behind him that I think could hit the number one wide receiver but when you're just when you're factoring in the probability of that happening mixed with you know the the likely range of outcome Michael Thomas is definitely going to be my pick there and then Adam Troutman is yeah baby becoming less of a an unknown name in the fantasy football world thanks Mike <laughs> I'm, I'm doing my best so uh, he is a tight end. Yes, he is a second-year tight end. Uh, as a rookie, he graded out as Pro Football Focus's best run-blocking tight end in the game. How many fantasy points do you get for that? None. But you earn the trust of your coach, and you get on the field, uh, and you earn the trust so much that they take Jared Cook and Hill, Jared the, Cook. And the other starting tight ends of the team, and you wave both of them, and you move forward with Troutman. He just The opportunity is great. Uh, for him, he's still a late round tight end. He's still a, he's definitely a lower probability player. I'm by no means declaring Adam Troutman is breaking out this season. I just think that the opportunity is there, and it, while his his athleticism is not on par with uh, like the Walrus, I mean, to be nobody fair, is. no, not many players are. I mean, he's big. He has uh, his highlight reel is incredible, and he has. Is there an, a, le a less athletic animal than a than walrus, a walrus. <laughs> than an actual walrus uh, look i've never seen a full speed walrus in the water oh man they're outstanding oh, in the fast. water you yeah know, that's where it is yeah i mean on of course on land that things fumbling and bumbling around it's, it has no has no legs you ever seen a shark run <laughs> me neither yeah, exactly <laughs> so, like, so slow on land how's a cheetah do in the water not great <laughs> i'll bet he's still pretty fast <laughs> so it just there's a lot of things that point in the the direction that Troutman can break out this year and be a top 10 tight end yeah all right before we get to talking about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers the Super Bowl champion yeah there you go Tampa Bay Buccaneers want to thank today's sponsors Manly Bands listen man we know we've spent a large chunk of our lives if you haven't yet you will of, of looking at that cut that clarity that carrot the color all the things for the wedding rings for our wonderful wives, and we don't care about ourselves. And you see that so in, in the actual jewelry stores. You go in there, and there's a kajillion things for her. And there's like, which one of these you want? Mm -hmm. uh, go with that one. Don't do that, because Manly Bands has incredible, incredible rings here. We're talking about pretty much every earthly material imaginable, and even some non-earthly materials. You want your that ring made out of a meteorite? Manly bands. You want your ring made out of a dinosaur bones? What? This is insane stuff. I personally have, get this, not a joke, the baller ring. That was oh. what I mean, Look, I didn't name it. What are the ballers? I got a baller band. You it are is a baller. awesome. Um, and you could get a bunch of these. Just match your outfit every day. Take your uh, marriage up to another level with Manly Bands. Uh, to order your Manly Bands and get 21% off plus a free silicone ring, go to manlybands.com slash footballers. That's manlybands.com slash footballers. Code footballers for 21% off Manly Bands. The best rings, period. Foot Clan today's podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? There is no shame in the game in admitting that you need some help. Everybody has tough stretches, and it, you don't just need to power through. Sometimes you actually need some help, and that is okay. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is a professional counseling situation. It is done securely 
online. The service is available for clients worldwide. Ladies and gentlemen, I've, I'm, I'm a very outspoken, outspoken person about mental health, dealing with depression, dealing with anxiety. These are things that can be helped. You can, you don't have to live in that darkness. Go get some help, and BetterHelp is a great way to do it. And right now, visit betterhelp.com slash footballers. That's better H E L P and join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using better help that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 States. And right now, fantasy footballers listeners get 10% off their first month. Betterhelp.com slash footballers. As Jason alluded to, we are moving forward now to the Tampa Bay Champaneers. <laughs> Tampa. Now the Buccaneers were 11 and five last year. They got hot at the right time. In fact, this blew my mind looking back. Going into the week 13 bye, they were seven and five. They were barely holding on to a wild card yeah, oh spot. Yeah. Uh, we have the playoffs fresh in our minds, but this was a an acclamation for Tom Brady and the offense. It's been a pattern. There was, there was the game in there of week nine when they got trounced yeah. by the Saints. They ended up averaging 33.8 points per game from that point forward, won the Super Bowl, uh, third in points per game on the year, seventh in total yards, ninth in pace of play, 29th in rushing attempts. This was Tom Brady's offense, and he got it going. This we, We've brought up a lot. Bruce Arians' offense, the first year, it's been difficult on quarterbacks. A lot of interceptions normally, a lot of downfield throws. Tom Brady was great, and he fi it makes sense that the GOAT would figure it out a little bit <laughs> it, it took before. him half a year. It, it took him half a year. The other guys, it takes him a full year, but the plant man, he got it done in a half. Yeah, once he tore the old MCL, he was set. <laughs> and it also <laughs> I'm moving around too much. <laughs> yeah. It happened to coincide with when all of his wide receivers were healthy, right? You, you had Godwin missing games in the beginning. You had Antonio Brown not there. Mike Evans was used in a way that he wasn't, you know, the, n not his specialty. Once they signed Antonio Brown, which he started in that crazy week nine blowout where Tampa Bay only scored three points. But from that point on, you had the trio healthy. You had Antonio Brown, Godwin, and Mike Evans healthy. And during that time, all three were very valuable. Mike Evans goes to his actual role of being the outside guy. You can't double him because what are you going to, who, who are you going to leave open? Antonio Brown or Chris Godwin and Tom Brady just caught fire, was unbelievable. I expect him to stay in those flames, knee surgeries uh, included. Um, and so uh, this offense looks to be outstanding in the passing game. I'm happy with all three wide receivers. Uh, I have major questions on the running game. Well, Tom Brady right now is being drafted as the quarterback 10. Barring something happening this offseason. He's going to end up one of my, my guys. I'm almost, Whoa! I'm almost sure of it. Spoiler. And, uh, he's got what he's got an ADP, uh, f like there's no way for his ADP to go past a certain point because of his birth certificate. Mm -hmm. Like no matter how much hype or excitement there is, he won't go past a certain point, which is why I like him so much. Uh, he's going to pass Drew Brees for the all time yardage record this year. And this offense finally got things going, and I think it continues. So I really like the value of an eighth-round Tom Brady. He's who I end up with in a ton of mock drafts. Uh, Jason, when you guys went head-to-head, -head, you had him in your mock draft. You and I both, I believe, have him as our quarterback five. And when you can draft him in the eighth, ninth, tenth round, it's just an unbelievable value. But turning to the running back room before the wide receivers, let's look at Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette. Um, Ronald Jones is a seventh-round pick. Leonard Fournette is a back-of-the-seventh-round pick, both outside the top 30 for the defending Super Bowl champions. So that says something. Uh, I still view Ronald Jones as a potential value due to the ambiguity in the backfield, due to the fact that he is uh, difficult to pre predict. But he was a mm -hmm. good running back. He is a good running back. He one hundred percent is a good is, runner. He is a yes. Uh, he's there. Not you go. Good at, at at catching the ball. He never has been from the USC out, days. When you factor in the minimum target threshold, he graded out as the worst receiving running back on Pro Football Focus. So the that's, worst. that's the bottom. 
Yes. Yeah. I mean, nowhere to go but up. But he did as average you might say. 5.1 per carry, 16.7 opportunities a game, was the running back eight for a 10-week stretch from week four to 14, and he smashed bad run defenses. So if you want a recipe for maybe you punted and you went zero RB or you're looking for late round um, streaming, like he's a streaming running back to me. Yes. Like a – but but not the kind where you like kind of hope for some production. Like you can stream him and have him compete and be an RB one or two for you on the given week if you just pick the right matchup. That's how you have to approach him. You cannot lock and load him into your lineup. I think that would be irresponsible. But if you pick the right matchup, I think you'll get value out of Ronald Jones. You can. What? But Jason, you said you despise this room, and is it because <laughs> you can't project it? It's tough because I think that you are going to have a lot of inconsistency. Um, if I took a shot on someone, it would without a doubt be Ronald Jones. Despite the playoff run that Leonard Fournette had, uh, the, the clear better football player for this team is Ronald Jones. And he did, you know, he, he was actually good the second half of last year. So, you know, coming in this season, uh, they signed Giovanni Bernard, and there's a, a lot of question. Okay. Uh, you got Tom Brady. He's he passes to the running back. You want to know why he passes to the running back? Because he passes to wherever his talent is. And James White was probably the second best pass catcher back. Then. You, re reminder: it was Julian Edelman, thirty-three year old Julian Edelman. Mm -hmm. Then James White is the number two target. Behind him was Philip Dorsett and Mohamed Sanu and Jacoby Myers as like a you know a second year player. Whereas now with Chris Godwin and Mike Evans and Antonio Brown, I, I think that the Brady passing to the running back is a little overblown because he might not need to. Here, here's a recipe. I'm going to give you the math equation for starting Ronald Jones. If you think he'll get more than 10 carries, play him. Sure. Every single game he got more than 10 carries last year, he was a top uh, 36 running back. Many of those games he was in the top 10. If, if The only games that he had actually dud games on, seven carries, three carries, 10 carries. The, the the problem though for fantasy is that a lot of times I remember There's going only three through, games going that he had through that. the the over the last two years going through that process was sometimes when it just seemed ironclad that this is going to be one yeah. of those ten plus carry games all of a sudden you come out and Ronald Jones goes to the doghouse and just gets three I carries think, I think and, that's still in our minds though it's 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 a little bit seared onto our memories what you're saying from last year because. At least according to our consistency metrics, he's still – like this is the RB16 last year. He, Jason, and he was a, yes. he's a B consistency on our metrics. You're talking so, the, the final production. Jason is, is simply talking about when you actually had that confidence to start him where he was sitting on your bench You go, is this the, the time? And you – and it just takes one incorrect guess. And now Ronald Jones is going back to your bench and just sitting there while you watch him have good production. It, Jones is incredibly difficult because – so, like, looking at a player, uh, Damien Harris, we expect Damien Harris or project him to be, to be very underutilized in the passing game. But he looks really locked in to be that first and second down role where Ronald Jones is not going to be uh, – uh, he's not going to see the same targets that he saw last year. He saw 42 targets, and Leonard Fournette saw 47. So, I mean, they, they were still being utilized by, by Brady, but they just weren't good in that role. And then, so now on top of that, someone who projects to be a first and second down running back has a player right behind him who the team will, at the, at the flip of a switch, they will go to him, as you saw in the playoff run where it really turned into Leonard Fournette. So I'm not opposed, Andy, to your, your take on feeling like Ronald Jones is a value there's just such a a huge probability of trap built into Ronald Jones that I like more, that probability of trap more more so than just his, his end of season production the week to week scenario that you will find yourself in of pulling your hair out not knowing what to do Evans Godwin Brown elite weapons they yes. were 21st in target share to the wide receiver position last year that is low but somehow third in fantasy points thank you Tom Brady I mean, Antonio Brown, If to me, the value on this team is it's absolutely outrageous of Antonio Brown going often in the in the double-digit rounds. I mean, he is – I'm not saying Antonio Brown's going to be a top-12 wide receiver, 
but he's going to be a more than likely he'll be a top 36 wide receiver by the end of the end of the season so that return on your ADP value is absurd and built into that is if Godwin misses time if Mike Evans misses time Antonio Brown has the ability to really turn it on I, I, I'm just not persuaded that Antonio Brown's going to be a meaningful part of your fantasy team oh man because of it I because I know Mike Evans is like I saw some metrics this past week that put Evans and Devontae Adams as like oh Mike Evans is an elite player a, and then Godwin at his value in the fourth round I adore I mean a wide receiver 16 on this team Antonio Brown will be utilized. I'm not saying he won't, but he will not finish ahead of Godwin and Evans. No, no, no. And no. he's 33. So there is a there's a built-in possibility that the other weapons in this offense are used as well. Like Antonio Brown may be very ancillary. And you may see uh who's who's the rookie from last year whose name is a Tyler statement? Johnson. You might see Tyler Johnson, Gronkowski, the return of OJ Howard, uh Gio Scotty Bernard. Scotty Miller is still Scotty there. Scotty Miller. Like there's the possibility to me where like you know, Brown is just kind of occasionally it, it, there. It's a powerful, it's a powerful offense in general. But I, I will say this. I mean, he came in week nine, and from week nine on, he was the wide receiver twenty-one, and that was with all of those pieces you're mentioning. And that's off. No, the Howard street. and Bernard weren't there. Uh, oh, okay, I mean, OJ. That, they were two of the names I mentioned. OJ Howard was not there. Um, but I mean, with that or core, Gio. I'm talking about the the main guys of Godwin and Mike Evans and that was including that first week where you know he came in I and they it. scored He's three points yes, yes he is older if someone's gonna say I don't care about age it's that Tom Brady guy uh, the off of the street plays eight games and in five of those eight which is to, this is my point of of him being in the tenth round wide receiver fifty five of his eight games he finished inside the top thirty six. That's a, a wide receiver three playing for a high-powered offense in double-digit rounds. It's, it's, that's crazy to me. Okay. Uh, anything else from this team? The, the tight end position, are you avoiding Gronkowski? I mean, pretty uh, impressive year for I Gronkowski. Am. Yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's really – Gronk is a streaming option. He's a touchdown-dependent uh, tight end like – most of them outside of the top five are. He's fine to stream on a weekly basis. I forgot to give you the Vegas win total for the Saints. Do you want to guess? I'm going to guess 12. Woo. Whoa. I'll take the under. Yeah, definitely way under. Yeah, I win. Nine. Okay. <laughs> um, wow. Jason no. loves the Saints. It'd be fun when we pick these this division because uh, the win total for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is 12, though, if that's what you meant. That is what I meant. Yeah. Did you? Oh, really? is that what you meant? Yeah. I asked you about the Saints. Oh no! I would not be twelve. I, I we were talking about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, so I went twelve. Yeah, but then he I, said, the "Well, Saints. I said, hey, I forgot to give you the win total of the Saints. What do you uh, think it is?" Okay, all right. Uh, but you were you nine. Know, no, it's too the, late. You're locked in at twelve. Okay. But I guess yeah, if you did think it was the Bucks, you were right. It was twelve. Let's move on to the Panthers. Last year, five and eleven. They were three and eight in one score games. Uh, okay, I'm not sure Darnold's going to help that. 24th in points per game, 30th, oh, no, no. 30th in pace of play. It wasn't great. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater is gone. Mike Davis is gone. Curtis Samuel is gone. Sam Darnold has arrived. Dan Arnold has arrived. They only added rhyming names. That's oh, the, the goal. And then uh, you get Christian McCaffrey back. I mean, he's not a, a player addition for this offseason, but he is, right? He's, he's yep. back. They drafted Terrace Marshall Jr. in the second round, who, who I love. Um, they drafted Chuba Hubbard for to play the backup role in a way that you know maybe Mike Davis really even couldn't you know somebody that's a little bit more versatile in the passing game. He's got he has juice. Oh yeah, yeah. which Mike Davis he's squeezing juice, all the juice, juice out. <laughs> yeah, he's doing that thing where the box is already crumpled and you're like, Come yeah, on, you got a little bit left just in a the couple drops left, please. I'm not genuinely. I'm I mean, thirsty bet between the division. The change at quarterback. Um, I'm not that excited for this offense. I really am not. I I don't know that Sam Darnold's the answer. Actually, I'm fairly sure he's not. I think Christian McCaffrey is locked and loaded. What if the question is name a quarterback that will not change the outcome of your team? Sam Darnold. Okay. Um, but We've McCaffrey last year he played three games and he ended up with as many top six weeks as Aaron Jones had. <laughs> Um, can I guess, was it three? 
He played in his three games. Did he end with uh, three top six? Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Because he is unfathomably great. I'm on the other side, Andy. I, I am, an, I am crazy excited about Carolina Panthers options in fantasy football in the draft. When it comes to obviously McCaffrey is all of our 101. So he's guys just draft him if you're at 101. Don't yep. don't overthink mm -hmm. it. He's unbelievably better than everyone else for fantasy so long as he's healthy, which is, you know, what we have to assume. But I love the value on DJ Moore still. Um uh, you know, I I think he's being drafted at basically where his floor is and if touchdowns come his way, he has Terry McLaurin type of ability to break out to me Robbie Anderson is left for dead he had over 1100 yards and like 120 plus targets last year now he's reunited with Sam Darnold I love I mean is that good or is that bad well he's definitely drafted at his floor right now to me so I I look at these options and I'm very excited and then I like Terrace Marshall this is a team last year that with a sucky Teddy Bridgewater still had three different thousand yard from scrimmage offensive guys. And I think another year under Ja Rule and they're going to go out there you, and they're going to I don't think so. You want to will you water bet me the Vegas win total? No, it's not wins. This is fantasy football production. I don't think they're going to win that many games, but if there is a water bet on value for fantasy points, I, we, we can find that and I will definitely bet it. I just think if the wins don't come, it really disrupts the consistency from those positions. And you saw that last year. I mean, Robbie Anderson started on fire. You say he's being drafted at his floor, wide receiver 34. From week six on, he was the wide receiver 37 last year. So that that's probably fair. And that was his bad stretch, right? From yes. week six on was, yeah. His, he was the wide receiver eight through the first five it, weeks. It was just, even though the, the end of year numbers were there, I think we can all admit DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, and Curtis Samuel – were probably started the least of all thousand yard receivers because they were all very difficult to predict because of that the way that that team went. So either way, um, I mean, I agree with you. I think DJ Moore has tons of potential, um, and I think Robbie Anderson's probably you know in the seventh round being drafted. Like I'd take, I'd rather have Robbie in the seventh than Antonio Brown in the tenth if it's me. But I just think it's very hard to predict. Uh, who's going to be good and win? Yeah, the it, the touchdown anomaly of DJ Moore, it will truly go down if 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 it happens again. If DJ Moore is an eleven hundred yards, four five receiving touchdowns, this is like this is Loch Ness monster, Bigfoot type of stuff that just how is this? This is impossible that to be that good to his athletic profile is absurd he's one of the best youngest wide receivers in the game who has had nothing but incredible production since he's came into the league the the touchdowns simply have not happened where and if you look at well that's a, that was a julio thing too right i mean that became yes. something that you just accept about a player yes um and through you know this is this would be the fourth straight year at that point you have to just you can't sit there and hope yeah and that yeah I, i'm I'm in in agreement with you. I but I lean more with Jason's side that I believe in DJ Moore, the the player. If you're looking at you know average yard yards turn into touchdowns, like this is just what happens in the NFL. And if you look at the average amount of yards a receiver has per how many touchdowns they have, I mean he he should have closer to 18 in in his three seasons to, instead of 10. Like that's some really bad touchdown variance luck I agree with that independent of the reality at quarterback because I don't know if we can count on the least consistent quarterback in the last two years oh, yeah. it, I mean it, that's a hard thing right I mean he threw nine touchdowns last year you are 100 percent correct I mean everything here that I, I I want to love these options so much and I do like I genuinely am bullish on these uh, wide receiver options for where they're being drafted. And then at the end of it, I always circle back to Sam Darnold because it's like Teddy Bridgewater last year threw 3% touchdown rate. That is horrifically That's really bad. really bad, yeah. Darnold was worse. Yeah. Darnold had 2.5, two but Darnold the years prior were 4.3. But, you know, we're, he has been on league average. average. Last year he had a very uh, shortened season and, and sucked with Adam Gase. So – 
Since entering the league in 2018 via Rich Rebar, uh, Darnold is 42nd in red zone completion rate, 38th in touchdown rate. 42nd? Out of 43. <laughs> out of 43. That, dang so, it, man. So you don't yeah. – what, what he's failed to do is literally produce touchdowns in the red zone. Like, he's the worst in football, um, and mm. I don't know if, like – it may take a couple of years to fully degaze. You know what I mean? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so that this scary. It's a, that's why I say it's a scary team to me. I would take the. I'd be smashing the Vegas under. Justin Fields was there for you to take. Yeah. Shame on you, this Carolina. Team, this team would be so. Oh my I mean, gosh. I would be so excited for the yes. prospects of this team with Justin Fields. All right, are you excited about this next squad? The 4-12 and 12 Falcons. They were 0-5 in the first five games. They were 0-5 in their final five games. That's a book-ended failure. 2-8 <laughs> and eight in one-score games. Woof. And now Todd Gurley, see ya. Julio Jones, farewell. Uh, the former departure better than the latter one. Uh, Mike Davis was added to the running back room. Now, they were already 27th in rushing yards last year and 20th in rushing attempts. So Mike Davis comes in and fills the role of running back, but Mike Davis does not come in, in my opinion, like a drafted Najee Harris would have and demand that the running back gets more of the offense. And so I, I guess I would say it gives some predictability to the fact that the pass attempts and the passing yards will be the focal point of the offense once again with Matt Ryan. Yeah, it, it really will be. And and we've talked about this. It's ironic you bring up Najee Harris, Najee Harris demanding uh, more workload. I actually see it somewhat similar, not in, in any way, shape, or form of demanding. I agree completely with you. But in the sense that there's just not a lot of other options there. So at the end of the season, I think I think that, the, that Mike Davis will have a lot of use but the running game for the Atlanta Falcons will be just so have all all the pie, but the pie will be smaller. Exactly, very James Robinson from last year, right? The, okay. the Jacksonville Jaguars running game was bad, and yet James Robinson was good because he just got all of the small pie. That's what I see here, but he is not quite as good as James Robinson. Uh, but he'll catch the ball, so I think Mike Davis is a good fantasy option for where he's being drafted. Nope. Yes. Nobody really wants him. He's the running back 27. His ADP is shocking to me. Like Mike Davis, getting that contract, what he did last year, he just reeks of a round four running back. Yes. Like, right in that area where the known good starters are gone, Great, great wide receivers there, but you you freak out and you go, I got to get a starting running back, so you take Mike Davis. But the fact that he's holding in the sixth, I think I think I'm I know interested. why. I think I know why. And the, if you talk to people from Atlanta, they're expecting other names to emerge beyond the names that we're familiar with. So Tony Brooks, James, or Javian uh, Hawkins are names that I think people in Atlanta are expecting to be able to potentially, you know, pull the the Philip Lindsay year and come out and really take it. Like if you if you split this r running game up, then it becomes really unattractive because of the fact that they'll be in the bottom third in in rushing attempts. And so I've heard a lot of uh people from Atlanta kind of saying, "Hey, watch out for Brooks James or somebody else to come in here and threaten Mike Davis because uh, if Davis has it to himself, he does represent about. Yeah, that. and I think we've we've uh, basically explained the backfield well. Uh, the the odds of these undrafted rookie free agents coming in and and pulling a Philip Lindsay are historically low, but obviously they have an opportunity ahead of them because it is such a sparse running back room. I do like Mike Davis as a value in the in the sixth Currently. seventh round. If he stays there, that's where it's like you know he he catches the ball enough. And Matt Ryan's going to be throwing enough to where he should be fine for fantasy. Uh, Mike Davis or, or Ronald Jones? Mike, Mike Davis. Davis. I'm Ronald Jones. Okay. Fair. I don't blame you. Calvin Ridley. Oh, oh, oh man. Oh, man. Really oh, not, man. not any good arguments against Calvin Ridley. Oh, man. Calvin Ridley's going to be... Oh, wait, wait, wait. I got a good one. Oh, go, please. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> he had a bad combine. <laughs> <laughs> Calvin Ridley is going to be so good for fantasy football. We is there an opposite argument for Calvin? Ridley? Like if you if you say no, that, I refuse to hear it. Well, no, I, I want to bring it up because you just brought it up for DJ Moore, right? You you sit okay. there and you smash the fact that the amount of targets and yards it should yes. equate to different touchdowns. 
I think we would agree that like on the touchdown front, like Ridley has been above average. Yes. So is that? Is, I'm just searching. No, right? I, 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 is there an average touchdown rate argument for Ridley where he goes out and gives you 1,496 yards but f six touchdowns? Probably not, but Probably that not. is the argument. The argument to make against him is that he's scored a touchdown at a higher than average rate, um, and that it's not just his doing. We've said this before. Touchdowns are not the stickiest stat from year to year. You can have a Mike Evans who has double digits, and then the next year has tons of yards and ends up with just a handful of touchdowns. That absolutely is the path for Calvin Ridley to be disappointing, but even when he's disappointing and he finishes the year with only six touchdowns, disappointing is still going to be like a top 10 wide receiver because of the sheer volume he we've seen him without Julio it's not like a it's it's not like a Juju Smith Schuster you know um, uh, Antonio Brown is leaving and we're not sure if he can handle this he can handle this the question to me is more about Matt Ryan is there any chance Matt Ryan just falls off that he's done and kaput no. and this team ends up with a different quarterback for the second half of the year because I, I put that at a greater than zero I don't no, I think Matt Ryan I, – I look at it the same way I did. Until Matt Ryan is off the roster, he'll be the starting quarterback. It's like Stafford in Detroit. They stunk as a team. But you could kind of go and look at their pass-catching options and just go, it's Matthew Stafford. That's how I view it. Yeah, sure. I, I think Matt Ryan's very secure. Calvin Ridley down the stretch once he returned from uh, – He's silly the, good. From the injury, and this is when Julio Jones was essentially gone – he was seeing over 10 targets a game. He was averaging over 100 receiving yards per game. He is elite. He is an elite separator. And now you bring in a new – you have a new head coach, Arthur Smith, and Arthur definitely has a plan, and that plan involves play action. You saw how efficient things could be in Tennessee when you had Ryan Tannehill. Like, it's, it's crazy to me when you look at the numbers and the studies on – teams running play action and just and how successful play action is and even how successful play action is when your run game just sucks like the the the, the big myth and the, the the big lie about it is well you got to have a good running game for play action no you just have action, to run it play action just works because you freeze someone for just a, a, a <laughs> the linebacker doesn't a go is this a good running back i'm not going to get ready to tackle him if he's not you get that half a second edge and create uh, an opportunity for your wide receiver, and maybe maybe Arthur Smith wants to somehow turn this team into the Titans, but he doesn't have Derrick Henry. It's not going to work. The team is still gonna, they're still gonna be a losing team that has to pass to catch up. So I, I am all in on Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley to me can be the number one wide receiver by the end of the season. Russell Gage is the biggest one of the biggest steals in fantasy to me. Yeah, and I will agree with you. Because the passing volume will be massive, and he's the wide receiver 61 right now. Yeah, I'm like, in on I, this. I will, I will put my water where my mouth is. Okay. I don't know. I will bet I'd somebody like Antonio myself. Brown versus oh, Russell Gage. Oh, put it on the board. You want in, Mike? Or no. Just, okay. no, go ahead. Russell Gage on my side, Antonio Brown on your side. Yes, sir. Water bet. This is definitely a volume versus talent bet yeah as Rus russell gage is fine he's a fine player um week 11 on he was on 141 target pace uh we've looked for a long time at the without julio numbers for calvin ridley but russell gage is the next man up in this wide receiver core as is kyle pitts rookie yeah. tight end sick the tight end six off the board right now uh there's a lot endless discussion we've had about kyle pitts and there will be more of it right now. But uh, <laughs> Jason has been uh, just a true despiser of the individual. He's on record saying that Kyle Pitts is, is uh, most likely to bust of anyone in the first round right. for this past draft. He said no. Kyle Pitts stinks. Yeah, that was the That's quote. That's Jason. That's the quote. Uh, no, tongue-in-cheek. Uh, feel like some words are being put in my mouth here. I, I, maybe I don't remember it exactly, but I feel like that's what you said. The real – situation for Kyle Pitts is this no rookie tight end has come in with greater draft capital and greater hype than Kyle Pitts in the history of the National Football League he is also coming into incredible 
opportunity yes. on the surface that you would not normally expect. A team, hey, you're a rookie tight end. You get to come into a team where Julio Jones departs, where you're number four in total pass attempts with an established quarterback, with an offense that will utilize you. All of that has to be counterbalanced with the reality that tight ends in the rookie season rarely produce prolific numbers. Let me ask you this. If he were to just simply tie the best rookie tight end season since the year 2000, and he does that, would you be happy with him? That's Evan Ingram, uh, his rookie season, 64 for 722 and six touchdowns. That would have been last year's tight end That's the best rookie six. season since 2000. Right. So. That, that would have been last year Logan Thomas. Would you say that that returned on where he's being drafted right now as the tight end six. Would you be happy drafting the tight end six, getting Logan Thomas, who was the tight end six last year? No. Because I would certainly not be. I think the return is there, personally. I think if what you were you're 64, giving up. 64, 7, 22, and 6? Yeah. I think what you're giving up in the fifth round to get a Logan Thomas from last year is, is not even close to paying off, personally. What if, what if Would it make you more comfortable if we just, instead of having the debate around the best rookie seasons of all time, if we just come out and say that, we expect Kyle Pitts to have the best rookie tight end season of all time. Like if we just say we think he'll have the best season ever of a rookie tight end, is that better for? Is that? Are you comfortable with us saying that? Yeah, I mean, I I think we uh, we need to say that if you know for where he's being drafted, if you want to believe in him, you have to believe he's going to have the best rookie tight end season of all time. You have to. If you don't believe that, you can't draft him where he's being go I going. I think he'll probably be the tight end three at the you, end of the year. I think so. Okay. Well, no, sorry, the tight end four. I think it'll be the tight end four. Well, then that's definitely worth drafting. Are you happy with round. that in the fifth round? If he was the tight end you four, I be. would probably be happy with that. I think he's going to be the tight end six. He'll be utilized. He'll have a great rookie season. But I am still very, very much on the side of Kyle Pitts is a rookie tight end. He's still out there. There's going to be a lot of two tight end sets. We saw that from Arthur Smith. Hayden Hurst exists, and it's not just going to be – uh, the Kyle Pitts show in his rookie season. I think he is easily the most talented pass catching tight end I've ever scouted coming out of college. But for redraft for 2021, uh, he he has he flat out has to have the best rookie tight end of all time, not since 2000, uh, in order to be good. And that that's tough. That's a tough so pill to swallow. Call it quits on Kyle Pitts. That's the Jason Ooh. model for 2021. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. Vegas win total is at seven and a half. Really? Yeah. Seven? Really? Which is the same as the Carolina Panthers. Wow. I think that's generous. I agree. Who wins the division? The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Agreed. Uh, that makes three of us. Toughest player to project in the entire division? Starting quarterback for the Saints. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's <laughs> a pretty easy one. I, I would say Leonard Fournette because his, his uh, playoff run, is it going to have an effect? And I feel like he shouldn't even be on the roster. I'm actually going to go with DJ Moore because sure. uh, I think it, it, the history, three straight years under under five touchdowns, makes it really hard to congeal in my head what he will be this year. Sneakiest player for 2021, I'll say Russell Gage. Terrace Marshall Jr., a player we sure. didn't really talk about, rookie wide receiver for the Carolina Panthers, coming into the Curtis Samuel vacated role and coming out of the Justin Jefferson Role from college where he dominated, and I love Terrace Marshall. Come on, y'all. It's Adam Troutman. Oh, please. Yeah. Okay. Sneakiest. Please. The and, sneakiest trout in all the lake. And before we close the show out, I mean, we would be remiss on the fantasy footballers if we did not mention and at least have a discussion about the, the Atlanta Falcons. They have a new defensive coordinator. Oh, yeah. Defensive coordinator, Dean Pease. <laughs> Dean. Dean Pease. What is he doing? And it is spelled P E E S. Okay. Dean Dean Pease. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. <laughs> we all do. Yeah, but, but Dean, Dean Pease. But Dean does as well. Yeah, is the defensive coordinator. Also, they yeah they they brought in a defensive assistant, uh, Matt Pease, <laughs> who he does as well. Yeah. And yeah. do they is did they bring in Robin Mafood at all? <laughs> I just. How do you your your surname is P? You don't get a choice in that. You oh, can you one hundred thousand percent have a choice in that. Not when when you're born, your parents can do what they want. But then you can go. You know what? 
my last name is Pease, and I'm not about that. Maybe they're proud of the Pease name. I, I imagine everybody in their family Pease. I would just cha- I would go P E A S. I would just change a letter. <laughs> it, it's 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 Pease, like the like the vegetable. Would you? That's going to help him in grade school. Like, what, what if it's Dean Poops? <laughs> yeah, I mean, would you change that? Would P O O P S? Yes, if his last name was Poops, I would change but it. But Pease is fine. What if he has a problem peeing, and then the doctor's oh, like, this man. is kind of ironic, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> I be- thought you'd be great at this based <laughs> on your lineage. You, Your great-great-grandfather was the quite a wizard. <laughs> he was the best. really unload. I can't believe that this was the thing. I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up. Dean Pease. For the fantasy footballers <laughs> brand, of course, we're talking about Dean Pease. All right. We want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the show. A George Kittle signed jersey. He's a tight end. I take over Mr. Pitts. Uh, signed bold. jerseys That's at four, $43.86 right now. Ends on Wednesday night at Pristine Auction. There's a Justin Jefferson signed jersey oh, with his rookie season stats on there. 63 bucks right now. That ends Woo! on Wednesday night, too. Um, you'll see the jerseys pop up all year long right behind my head as we rotate them in. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit. That'll do it for our first NFC Divisional show. Go Suns. Or you may never oh, see us man. again. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.